uh, the first part. So what we looked at was the first part of protein synthesis, which was transcription, in which the DNA is, uh, the gene, sorry, the gene is copied or transcribed to produce a molecule known as the mRNA. So that was the first part of protein synthesis, known as transcription. So once the mRNA in the nucleus has been produced, it will then go through the nuclear pore. It will go out uh, of the nucleus, through the nuclear pore, and enter the cytoplasm. Now remember, on the mRNA, in a previous video, we said that every triplet basis on the mRNA are referred to as the codon. I've highlighted each codons, okay? For example, AUG is one codon, CCG is another codon, uh, AAG is another codon, and so on and so forth. So in total, you can count uh, the mRNA has uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 20, 24 bases, and 24 bases divided by 3 is equal to 8 codons. So when you count the highlighted areas, you will see 8 codons in total. And I've also labeled it there for you to see which are the codons. Now, what is very important to know is what needs to happen next is the process known as translation. Now, what exactly does translation mean? In English, uh, I mean, in terms of language, translation just basically means taking one language and turning it into another language. For example, from English to Malay. Uh, in English, if you want to say, how are you? In Malay, we say, apa kabar? Okay, apa kabar is just the same. Okay, it's the same meaning but in a different language but in biology translation means we are taking the language of the codons and we are translating it into amino acids for example codons AUG will translate into which amino acids that's what we want to know so what do I mean by this okay so let's look at the process of translation so for translation to happen the first thing that we have to know is the it has to involve the ribosome. If you remember, the ribosome is made up of the small subunit and also the large subunit. Now, what will actually happen now is the mRNA will bind to the small subunit of the ribosome. And as you can see over there, two codons, codons AUG and also codon CCG are exposed to the larger subunit. Now, so what are they doing? What are they waiting for? So in this case over here, they're just basically waiting for amino acids, right? So the codons are just essentially waiting for amino acids. And who are going to bring the amino acids over there to the ribosome? If you remember, we saw this in the previous video. It's the tRNAs that are supposed to bring the amino acids to the ribosomes. So let's look at certain types of tRNA over here. Okay, I'm just drawing out some tRNA molecules, as you can see over there. Now, there are a few things that I want to talk about before we go into the detail of translation. What we have to see is, I'm just drawing out the tRNAs over there, and I've highlighted green areas. As you can see, the first tRNA at the top right, it has UAC. The second one has GGC, UUC, and so on. Those highlighted parts are referred to as something called anticodons, okay? Remember, mRNAs have codons, but tRNA has anticodon. That's the difference between the two. Now, something you have to understand about the tRNA is this. Each tRNA can only carry one type of amino acid specific to its anticodon. What do I mean by that? For example... If the tRNA has an anticodon of UAC, it will carry an amino acid called methionine, okay? And, and I've shortened it to just say MET. A tRNA with an anticodon of GGC will carry an amino acid called proline, which I've shortened to PRO. A tRNA with an anticodon of UUC will carry an amino acid called lysine. Do we have to memorize which tRNA carries uh, amino, which amino acids? No, we don't. It is not something you will have to memorize. Biology is not cruel 
like that. So don't worry about this. And as you can see over there, HTRNA carries a specific amino acid. Another thing I would like to edit is, um, as you can see here, if the tRNA has an anticodon of UAC, it will always bind to its respective amino acid. As you can see, this tRNA is empty. It does not. It is not binding to an. It is not binding to an amino acid yet. And there are two choices. It has the amino acid methionine on the left side, and also proline on the uh, on the right side. Uh, what will happen is the cells will attach the respective tRNA to its correct amino acid based on its anticodon. Uh, to simplify that, a tRNA with an anticodon of UAC will always be attached to the amino acid methionine. This is the same for all living organisms. Now, each tRNAs with different anticodons can also sometimes carry the same type of amino acid. Again, what do I mean by that? For example, look at the four tRNAs at the bottom. The first tRNA has an anticodon of GCU. The second tRNA has an anticodon of uh, GCA. The third tRNA has an anticodon of GCC. And the fourth tRNA has an anticodon of GCG. Okay. And it, interestingly, all of them carry the amino acid called arginine. Okay. So these are something very interesting that you have to know about tRNAs. Each tRNA can only carry one type of amino acid specific to its anticodon. And sometimes multiple tRNAs can carry the same type of amino acid. For example, tRNAs with anticodon GCU, GCA, GCG, and GCC will all carry the amino acid arginine. Again, do we have to memorize which tRNA carries which amino acids? No, you don't have to, right? But it's something that we have to understand. Now, so let's go into the process of translation. As you can see here, the codons are exposed to the large subunit of the ribosome. So what's going to happen next? The tRNAs will now carry amino acids to the ribosome. Now, if you look at the top there, there are seven tRNAs that I've drawn out, right? So which tRNA has to go first? In this case, the anticodons and codons have to form complementary base pairing. So as you can see, the first codon is AUG on the mRNA, the green color ones. So a tRNA with an anticodon of UAC has to go and form complementary base pairings. And they will form hydrogen bonds with each other. The second tRNA will be GGC. And it will, its anticodons will form complementary base pairings with the second codon of the mRNA. I'm zooming in over here so you can see how the complementary base pairing works. As you can see, when the codon is AUG, the anticodon is UAC. And when the codon is CCG, the anticodon is GGC. That is how the specific tRNA molecules will carry the amino acids to the ribosome through a process known as complementary base pairing. Now, what happens after that? As you can see there, suddenly the ribosome will join those two amino acids together between methionine and proline. So the ribosome links the two amino acids together with peptide bonds. That's basically what happens. All right. So what happens next? As we can see here, the ribosome will then move slightly to the right. In this case, it moves slightly to the right. But what you just have to say is it moves slight, it moves along the mRNA. The first tRNA goes away. Okay, the first tRNA just basically goes away. And then another tRNA comes and joins in. And the ribosome will then link the amino acids together. And what I what do we notice is happening is the polypeptide chain is becoming longer. And the process repeats itself over and over again. And that the ribosome moves along the mRNA. Another tRNA comes and forms complementary base pairings with the codons, and the ribosome will join the amino acid to the growing polypeptide chain. 
So how do we write this? So it just basically keeps going and the polypeptide chain is becoming longer. So in the exam, all you just have to say is the ribosome moves along the mRNA, translating more of the codons and the polypeptide chain becomes longer. That's basically it. So different tRNA molecules just come in, form the complementary base pairings with the codons of the mRNA and then the ribosome links the amino acids together. That's how a polypeptide chain is made. Now, finally, the ribosome will reach the stop codon. The stop codon is basically the codon that terminates or stops the translation process. And the stop codon can be one of three, UGA, UAA, and UAG. You don't have to memorize which are the stop codons. They are usually given in the exam, so don't worry about it. But just know that the stop codons will always stop the translation process. And once it stops, the polypeptide chain has been synthesized. This is how the ribosome synthesizes a protein or synthesizes a polypeptide. Remember in chapter 1, we just said ribosomes synthesize protein. Now in chapter 6, we are looking at how it actually synthesizes the proteins with the help of the mRNAs and tRNAs. So translation stops when the ribosome reaches the stop codon. A thing that I forgot to mention earlier was the fact that the AUG codon, the first part of the mRNA, is referred to as the start codon. So what the start codon means is it's the codon that begins the process of translation. So the start codon, which is just AUG, uh, begins translation, and then the three stop codons will end the process of translation. I forgot to put that in the beginning, so please take note of that as well. What will happen to all the tRNAs? Now, if you notice, all these tRNAs have been used up, right? So they don't have amino acids. Well, guess what? They can be reused, okay? So a tRNA with an anticodon of UAC will then be joined together to another methionine just floating around in the cytoplasm. They'll be joined together by certain types of enzymes and also with the help of ATP. But you don't have to know that in detail. The point I'm trying to make over here is once the tRNA is used in translation, it can be reused again by joining it to another amino acid. That's basically it. And for example, if there's alanine as an amino acid, they will only join together with a tRNA with the anticodon of CGC. Because remember, tRNAs are specific to the type of amino acids they carry. This is universal across all living organisms, be it an otter, a mango tree, or a bacterium.